gears. You shift up and you shift down. It's pretty simple, right? Well, you will actually be surprised to know there is so much more to manual gears than just that. Whilst also making the switch from an automatic gearbox can gain you heaps of time on your friends and rivals. But how can removing a basic assist improve your lap times and how do you master it? Well, gear up because we have got five tips and tricks for driving with manual gears. Step one, learning the basics. If you are a seasoned veteran at using manual gears, this tip may not be for you. But if you are a beginner, then learning the very basics of manual gears can actually be quite frustrating. First of all, you need to locate what you will be using to up and down shift. This will either be paddle shifters behind your wheel rim or two buttons on your gamepad, which you can set for your own personal preference. Right, now we've got that out of the way, when do you upshift? Finding the perfect upshift is extremely important. Take too long to go up a gear and you'll over rev the car. Not only will this slow you down on the straights, but will also add unnecessary wear to both your engine and gearbox in career mode. But this does not mean short shifting is the way to counter this. Uh, okay, right now, before you jump down our throats and start yelling, but you said short shifting is your best friend and that you should use it all the time. And yes, you should, but only in lower gears. Once you get full traction, usually fourth gear or above, short shifting will massively affect your speed on straights and you'll just become a sitting duck. The best way to judge when to shift is by using the LED lights that appear on your wheel or on your rev limiter. As you build up revs, these lights will go from left to right, varying in color, with the first five lights being red and the next five lights being purple. This may sound like I'm just talking rubbish about lights, but these are important. The purple lights actually indicate that you should be shifting at this moment. However, don't worry if you don't get it right away. The important thing is to keep practicing. And after time, you'll improve your peripheral vision whilst also relying on the sound of the engine to notify you when to upshift. Step two, short shifting. Whoa, 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 Hayden. You just told us short shifting is bad. Make your damn mind up. Okay, yes, I did just say short shifting is bad, but hear me out. Avoid short shifting at all costs after you hit fourth gear because like we said in my previous point, you'll lose all momentum on the straights and you'll make it easier for everyone else to overtake you, which you don't really want. But short shifting can actually aid you massively in the lower gears. We touched upon this in one of our earlier videos, top five tips on removing traction control on F1 2019. And what we explained in that video was that if you short shifted, you actually reduce the amount of wheel spin created, which in turn keeps your car planted on the road. This is best used in lower gears from first to fourth, as this is where you're more likely to lose grip whilst accelerating. So therefore, short shifting can be your worst enemy if used incorrectly. But if you learn how to utilize it, it can actually become your best friend. So always remember, low gears, short shift, high gears, normal shift. Step three, engine braking. What if I was about to tell you that using manual gears can actually help slow you down? You'd think I was a complete idiot, right? Brakes slow you down, not gears. And yes, whilst that is correct, I'm about to tell you a handy little tip that will have you braking later than you were before. This is called engine braking, and it's the concept of shifting down the gears so quickly that the engine over revs, slowing down the car. However, this does need to be perfected. Go down too many gears too quickly, and you'll lock up the rear tires, causing the car to spin out of control under braking. But if you don't downshift quick enough, you'll fail to stop the car in time, overshooting the corner, or ending up in a barrier. Perfecting this technique will gain you heaps of time, but you need to use it wisely because it will also add loads of wear to both your gearbox and engine. Now, this isn't necessarily a problem in online racing because your car will just reset between each race. But if you are a lover of career mode, then overusing this technique will result in more engine and gearbox penalties further down the line. Step four, brain training. Right, we've gone through the basics and crossed off acceleration and braking. So let's now look at cornering. F1 2019 can actually be very helpful in the way there is a guide that you can turn on telling you which gear to be in. And whilst this is handy, it doesn't always show the quickest gear to be in for each corner. 
We will go into detail on how ignoring this can make you quicker in the next point, but for now, let's focus on training that brain. Because remembering which gear to be in for each corner is probably the most important tip we can give you in this video. Down in the bottom corner of your screen, you will find what gear you are currently in. But trying to juggle between looking at the gears and actually trying to drive competitively can be extremely difficult. This is where only repetitive practice can help you out. You need to train yourself to know which gear to be in for every single corner on every single track. And whilst this may sound like an impossible task, especially if you feel like you have the memory of a goldfish, you don't have to be afraid. These things will take time, but you will get there eventually. A handy tip though, to get you there quicker would be to count downshifts. Say you're approaching a heavy braking zone. You arrive at the corner at max speed, eighth gear, and you know the corner coming up is a second gear left-hander. But how do you make the apex whilst looking down and making sure you're in the correct gear for the corner? Well, this is where counting downshifts will help you out. You're going from eighth gear to second gear, yes? So that means you have to downshift six times. If you count this correctly, you will be in second gear and you didn't even have to look away from your actual racing. Keep doing this over and over and you'll slowly notice that you don't even need to count anymore. Your muscle memory will take over. Step five, get that fish tail out. We touched upon ignoring the guide in the previous tip. So let's go into more detail about how and why that will make you faster. To be in a lower gear than recommended can actually help you around a corner, especially if that corner is a chicane and you want to open up the second part of it. Dropping down an extra gear usually causes the back end to step out just a little bit, which in turn will also get the nose pointed in the direction you want it to go. Let's take the first two corners of France, for example. If you take it how the game thinks you should, you'll get understeer through turn one, giving you a terrible line through the following corner and then leaving you at risk from cars behind on the following straight. But if we drop one gear lower and sacrifice our speed through the first corner, we will get oversteer instead. This will put our car on the left-hand side of the track, ready to attack the second corner and give us the best exit for the straight. However, this can't be used in every scenario, especially fast corners, as you will lose the back end too much, putting yourself somewhere where you just don't want to be. Those have been our top five tips on racing with manual gears. If you have enjoyed this lesson and found it useful, then feel free to check out our other F1 2019 Esports 101 videos. And if there is any felt and if there is anything else that we can help you with let us know in the comment section down below but until next time i've been hayden from veloce esports and we will see you in the next video